As you can see, I'm not Brad Pitt, but I, I am here to talk to you about security, namely building secure container images for the cloud with Yocto. I've been building software for a long time now. Um, I am a technical co-author uh, along with Chris Simmons, who is the original author of this book. Um, Chris Simmons uh, spoke last week at Linux Plumbers um, twice. He is uh, an incredible teacher, trainer. I, I always learn something from every one of his talks, and I recommend you, you check him out. Um, I have three copies of the book um, for uh, anybody who sticks around and wants one. Uh, it's, um, it's a successful book, um, 88 reviews on Amazon Germany, 4.7 out of 5 stars. Um, I myself live in Silicon Valley, so very far from home. And um, yeah, I live there with my wife and my 12-year-old son, who I love very dearly. So I'm going to tell you, so I'm always asked, what is the Yocto project? And um, that's a question that deserves a good answer. And I'm going to give you a long answer. Um, there are things you can do with Yocto that you can't do with the cloud native tools that are used to build container images. Um, well, you, you can do them with the cloud native tools, but Yocto was built from the beginning to do these things, and they all relate to security. I'm going to show you how to use Yocto to build an OCI image, uh, and then I'm going to talk about the pain points, of which there are some very significant ones but I believe they can be mitigated successfully. And lastly, I'm going to talk about the future of the project, which is very exciting and I think will, very relevant to what a lot of you do on a day-to-day -day basis. So, the motivation, CVEs, critical vulnerabilities and exposures. Security bugs. We know about these. They're top of mind these days. In the US, we have two, two databases of CVs that I know about. There's the CISA catalog and the NIST North American database. Um, you know, we, we, you're, I'm sure you're all aware of the uh, software supply chain attacks most notably the XZ backdoor, very scary stuff. Um, I'm, I'm not go, gonna go into the details of all these, but I do wanna talk about the recent CrowdStrike outage because I, I feel, um, you know, this, this just underscores the impacts that our systems have on the, on the worldwide economy. So I was in, in Taiwan when this happened and um, people were, were visibly upset. You know, this, 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 this seemed to have affected everyone. And you could say like, well, you know, that's what you get for running Windows, right? Uh, <laughs> but but that's, that's not the attitude we need to adopt here. I mean, you know, bricking of systems, by a malicious actor is something that could happen to us, right? Like, we, we all know that UE, UEFI Secure Boot is not impenetrable. Um, you know, Logo Fail is the most recent exploit that comes to mind. And 
So we need, we need to be vi vigilant. We can't like, you know, put our head in the sand, curl up into a ball and, 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 and cry. Like we, we, need, we need, these things just keep coming and we need to be proactive about them. So what is Yocto? First off, Yocto is BitBake. What is BitBake? BitBake is the open embedded task runner and build system. You could think of it as make on steroids. This thing will take over your PC, it will grab every available core, and it will build just tarballs and tarballs of source code in parallel. This is what it was designed to do. Uh, BitBake was inspired by the Portage Package Manager used by Gen2, and it builds everything from source. So this is not what you're used to. You're not starting with a pre-built distro. You're building the Linux kernel, your packages, everything is being built from scratch from the original source. Um, BitBake is, is not only the, the build system, it's also the, the, the syntax that you use to define recipe files. These are, these are make files. So it's not the source code, it's everything around the source code. It's everything that's used to configure and compile the binaries. Um, the, the syntax of BitBake is a mix of shell and Python. This is a very powerful mix. You're able to define functions in Python and in, in, embed those into shell tasks that I'll show you later and accomplish much more than you could with make files. Um, so the, the output of a recipe is a unit of software, a package. Um, so the, the build flow for a package is you, you, the recipe you know, compiles the binaries, just like a make file does. Afterwards, BitBake will install the build artifacts into a staging area. Those artifacts are then bundled into a binary package. There's three package formats that are supported, RPM, Debian, and IPK. Some QA checks are run on the binaries. These are things like static analysis. Uh, and then the binary package is submitted to a collection of package feeds. Those package feeds are then all assembled into one Linux image. Like this is all done in one shot. You're, you're never installing packages one by one. You're, you're building a complete root file system. When, when, you, when you build a Yocto image. Now, through each stage of the build flow, there are SHA-256 hashes being generated. So these, these, hashes, these hashes are used to verify the integrity of the binary artifact. Um, the, the, uh, so this is kind of like measured boot in a way, where you use the TPM, through, through the boot sequence and you know, there's PCR values and, and that, that ensures that you're boot, booting securely. It's, it's like that, but it, it, instead of applying to the boot sequence, it applies to the build flow of a package. Uh, bit, so Yocto involves the concept of layers and a layer is just a Git repo. So when you build a, a, a Yocto, an image with Yocto, you are, you, are, you are assembling layers in a layer stack. Each of these layers contains recipe files for, for different packages. You know, this, this could also be board support stuff, you know, very you know, uh, embedded machine related metadata. And so these layers are all smashed together to, to then generate your finished Linux image. So the, the built-in layers are part of the, the Pocky repo. Pocky is the default distro for Yocto. Um, it's, the, it's the first Git repo that you need to do anything with Yocto. 
The next layer on top of that are the, the open embedded core layers, um, which include networking, file systems, things like that. So as you build up your layer stack, so these are, these are it's like the layers of a cake, that's why it's called bit bake. You're, you're, you're baking your Linux image. Um, as you build them up, these appear in a conf file in your output build di directory. You'll see the active layers in, that, in there. So what is, what is a distro in the, context of, in the context of Yocto? A distro is just another layer. You can define your own distro very easily. Here I'm defining one called mackerel. I'm giving it a name, so it, it's the, these are all in, these variables are all in the macro conf file. And so, what, what do you do when you when you roll your own distro? You're making choices. You're selecting whether or not you're going to use glibc as your C standard library or Muscle. You're you're so you're choosing whether you're going to use System D as your init system or the classic SysV init. And most importantly, you're choosing your package format. The default is RPM. Here I am switching to IPK. Now, building a distro, you are going to modify the local.conf file in your output build directory, and you're going to set the distro variable to be macro, that distro that I just defined. So what this does is it will substitute your custom distro for the default Pocky distro. And so all the choices that you made will now be applied to the, the, to the finished Linux image. And, and so here, these last two lines, I'm, I'm cleaning the previous target image, which was for the Raspberry Pi, because I don't want the Pocky stuff. It, the, the packages aren't even compatible, right? They're RPMs. I need to, I need to regenerate the packages for IPK. So I, I clean the build, and then I start a new build. So why bother with all this, right? I just want to download and, and install some packages. You know, why, why are you making me jump through all these hoops? Security, that's the reason. So re reproducible builds are enabled in Yocto by default. Like Yocto has always needed reproducible builds for its embedded use cases. And what are re reproducible builds good for? Well, that is how you verify the integrity of your binary artifacts. That's how you're able to determine whether or not malware has been injected into your binaries. You're, you're using checksums, you know, SHA-256 throughout the build flow to ensure that nobody is tampering with your binaries. Now, very quickly you start to go down this rabbit hole of trust, right? I mean, because it's like, do you trust where your packages are coming from? Do you trust the major distros? You probably do. Do you trust the things like from PyPI that you pip install? Maybe, maybe not. Who, who do you trust? The answer is you, you, you can't trust anyone. You, you need to build everything yourself. That's, that's, that's Yocto's answer. And um, as, you know, as I researched this idea more, eventually you arrive at this 40-year-old ACM Turing Award um, uh, keynote by, by Ken Thompson, where he talks about how you can't, you know, the, the C compiler, that thing that's never supposed to lie to you, you can't even trust that. And, he, he, and it's a very short three-page lecture, astonishing. If you haven't read it, I, I recommend you all go out and read, read that. What, what else does reproducible builds enable? Well, you know, if the checksum matches, like, all right, you don't have to rebuild the thing anymore. I mean, you already rebuilt the thing, right? That's how you know the checksum matched. But then anything that depends on that package downstream, like it doesn't need to be rebuilt because 
that package didn't change, that dependency didn't change. So if all the dependencies don't change, then, and, and the software itself didn't change, then, then you don't need to rebuild it. You can just use the cached binaries. And lastly, reproducible builds provide transparency. And what is transparency? Transparency is SBOMs, Software Bill of Materials. So um, Joshua Watt, who's done a, done a lot of work on this, he, he describes an SBOM as like the list of ingredients on, you know, a cereal box. You know, in our case, it's the list of packages in our OCI image, along with their specific versions. Now, this is information that you need to have, right? How do you know your image is secure if you don't even know what's on it? You know, SBOMs provide you with that information. And then once you know the version of the software, well then, of the package, then how do you know whether or not there, it has any CVEs? Well, you know, we have, Yocto has the CVE database. It's able to, to check that and tell you what, what CVEs, you know, are in your software and, which, and also which ones have been patched. And SBOM is, SBOMs are in the SPDX format, which is JSON, standard, human readable. What else does Yocto give you? Every recipe for every package that Yocto builds requires a license. It won't, will not let you build something without a license. And th this is important because as we've seen recently, licenses can change. So, so Something that's open source one day may not be open source the next day. Your employer wants to know this because they, they, they want to know what terms they need to comply with. Reduced attack surface. So this, this is a... So we know about minimal distros, you know, cloud-friendly distros like Alpine that are extremely lightweight. Uh, so that way you're able to spin up lots of these on a single machine because they're such low overhead, only, only a few megabytes. And um, so the, the concept behind these minimal distros is that you, you only install the packages you need and nothing more. And, and, you know, Yocto works the same way because it was designed for constrained embedded environments. You, you don't, you're not going to put anything on your image that you don't absolutely need. And this goes to the extreme in, in, in embedded because it's like, you know, if you're booting straight into your application, like, what do you need a shell for? You know, don't, don't include a shell. Like, Package management, that's, that's not a concept on, an, on embedded edge devices. You're, nobody's installing packages on those. So you, there's, there's typically no package manager. And then, um, like, okay, a compiler. Well, you need those for development, right? But you don't want them at runtime because, like, if you can compile a C program on the target, then, then, then you can do anything. All bets are off. Um, so, you know, it's, it's good to be minimal, but it's not everything. And um, so there was a paper, a few, uh, there was a blog post a few years back by Andy Grove where he talks about, you know, his, his Rust application being so slow and, and having to profile it. And he was, he was using Alpine and eventually he pinpointed the problem, it went all the way down to muscle, and so he swapped muscle out with glibc, and, and all his performance problems went away. And, and I, I'm not here to, you know, bash muscle. I think it's great. I think, you know, it, it definitely, you know, minimizes the size of your, your distro, but being small is, isn't everything. You know, sometimes it, it's, it's, you're willing to take the hit on image size if it means you're your app is going to perform the way you want it to. So, 
hopefully maybe you're sold on some of the benefits now. Um, how, do, how do I do any of this stuff? How can I make Yocto work for me? So you can start with you know, the latest Ubuntu LTS. You install these packages. You set the, the, the locale. This does some invasive things to glibc that I won't go into. And then you source this environment f file that is in the Pocky repo. And this is going to put you in an output build directory that you named build OCI with all the bitbake environment variables set uh, as needed. So once you're in that output build directory, you, want, you run this bitbake layers fetch command. And the key thing here is the last word, meta virtualization. So that is, that is the top layer of this OCI image. So what this command does is it git clones all the, re all the git repos. So it git clones the meta virtualization git repo and all the dependent layer repos all in one shot. And what you end up with is a layer stack that looks like this. So it's, it's inverted, meta virtualization is at the bottom instead of the, t the top. And there, there is also a, a local.conf file uh, that, uh, that would be below meta virtual, virtualization if it would appear here. So this is, where, this is that file where remember you set the distro to be mackerel instead of the default pocky. So, so that is like the last set of overrides that gets applied to, to the layer stack. You could think of it as like the icing on your cake. Um, and then lastly, you build the OCI image. The app container is, is the name of the image recipe. And then you wait 70 minutes and you will get uh, you will get a, a screen that looks like this. So you can see here 4,539 tasks were executed. You pretty much just built the entire world here and from source. And I, I did this myself not long ago on a, an Intel mini PC with 12 cores. And yeah, it, it took 70 minutes and it fully utilized my machine completely. The fan span, spun the whole time. Um, you, what you will see when you, when, you, when you build an image is you'll, you'll see a progress bar for every core on your machine. And so as tasks start and, and uh, as, start, as tasks finish and another task start, you know, the progress bars will, will reset. Now, you can, you can override the OCI image variables for, for the, the image recipe with your own val values. And, um, you know, these, these should be familiar to you. These, these are your, your, your friends from, you know, Docker files and container files. Um, you know, you have an image entry point this is, this is the, the executable that, that runs when you start your container. You have a list of arguments to that entry point, any ports that you want to open, uh, a runtime user ID in case you don't want to run everything as root, you could, you, could, you could use a different user ID, and then the image tag name. Um, and, uh, and of course, there's also environment variables. This is typically how, you know, keys are, are in, inserted into a container image. Um, I went a step further and created my own layer for, um, for uh, Python microservices. Uh, the, 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 the previous image I showed you is just the Hello World Flask application, you know, not not that interesting. So what, what I did is I came across this uh, tutorial from RealPython. RealPython is a, is a website and a podcast. Uh, just, it's, it's a learning 
community, and uh, it's, it is behind a paywall, it's subscriber base, but Dan Bader, the, the, the creator, just, he does a ter terrific job. I, I can't recommend it. I mean, I just, I feel like it's, it's, it's part of my everyday work. Like, I, I use it to, to stay abreast of like modern practices in Python. And, and uh, so that's where the, that's where this, this demo comes from, is from one of their blog posts. Um, so gRPC is protobuf. So you, you, you start with a, a proto file, you know, message definition file, and the gRPC tools will then generate wrapper code around that protocol. It will generate a, a, a server, it'll generate server and client code. In this case, you know, we're, we're targeting Python, but many other languages are supported. And we, we want to do this at compile time, right? Um, we we want to generate this code at compile time and get it on the, 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 the finished Linux image. And so this is a bit baked task that, that does that. There's a, there's a do, every recipe has a do compile step. And in that step, I'm just calling the, the gRPC command line tools to, to uh, parse the proto file and generate the, the client and server. Now, okay. There is no, there are no package, there's no package management once you're on a, 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 once you've deployed. So there's no package manager there. And even in the build process, like you can't like pip install packages. If you have, if your Python application has dependencies, you have to tell Yocto to install those onto the finished image. Uh, rather than use pip install, and so there there are a lot of recipes for for Python libraries there. You know the whole Python standard library is there. There's Flask. There's Jinja. Uh, you know SQL Alchemy. Everything you need to to build a basic microservice is there, and secure. And, and then you, you build your image just like I built the other image. So uh, there's a meme going around lately where they say that uh, if you start playing around with Yocto, you're entering a world of pain. Um, this, is, this, this is a quote from the Big Lebowski. I really think that's an exaggeration. Now. Okay, I understand 70 minute build time, that's a non-starter for most of you. But keep in mind, you're only taking that hit the very first time. Like Yocto is very intelligent about caching, about not rebuilding when something hasn't changed. So once you've built those binaries once and they don't change, you, you have them, you're not taking that big hit again. And you, you, can, you can alleviate this problem even more by sharing the, the cached binaries and the downloaded tar, tarballs, because that takes time too, right? It takes time to download all this source code. You can share them from like a, a central build machine to the rest of your team. And uh, there's also a, a hash equivalent server that runs on this build machine. Um, and you can you could deploy that you know on your local network or you could deploy it in the cloud. There there is a tool called Toaster. It's 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 a it's a build server with a web UI. Okay, so this is complicated, right? Like 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 layers, <laughs> layers. When you have multiple layers, you have a lot of flexibility, but. You know, weird things can happen. Layers can interact in unexpected ways. The, the, the syntax itself is complicated. There's all these different forms of assignment. You know, some things get bound at parse time. Other things get evaluated at build time. It's confusing to me. And I'm sure it's confusing to others. 
But hey, you know, this is like, if you deal with build systems, like this, this is your bread and butter, right? You're, you're, <laughs> you're looking at build errors, like in the case of Yocto, you're, use, you're looking at task logs to figure out you know, where things went off the rails. If you need to, you're going to sketch out a dependency graph to try and pinpoint where, where, where the problems are, are originate. Um, you know, this, this, this is what you do when you're building software. Now, there is very good tooling to help you. There is a, a, a VS Code extension from from Savoir Faire that is excellent. It, 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 you know, it has bit-baked syntax highlighting and, and everything you expect from, from modern language tooling. There is CAS, which, which wraps the bit-bake command line. So, you know, it streams line, streamlines it so you can use it for CI, CD, you know, in you know, GitHub actions or whatnot. Uh, it, it just takes a lot of the tedium out. There is dev tool, which lets you, you know, add your own existing recipes, modify, you know, e existing recipes. Um, you, you, you know, it's to your benefit to learn how to use all this stuff. It, it improves the whole experience greatly. Now, with, with something as, as complex as BitBake, um, it's like it's like C++, right? Like all the features are there. You can do everything. You can do inheritance. You, I mean, I mean, it's 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 extremely powerful. But you know, along with all the features comes all the foot guns, and and so you you, you really you know just you're just trying to get your job done. Just because a feature exists doesn't mean mean you need to use it. Just do use what you need and nothing more to get your job done. Okay, and then the last pain point is routine maintenance. So the, there is this misconception that you need a dedicated build engineer to do Yocto. Like nobody else is going to want to touch it. And I can tell you that is not true. Like I, I worked for Lunar Energy. Uh, a, a, a software team in London, you know, these were cutting edge Rust developers writing software for a home battery. They were all extremely adept with Yocto. They could all fix, you know, build breaks as, ha as they happened. You know, they, you know, they, there, there, there was no dedicated, you know, build engineer. They, they could, every one of them could do it all. It, 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 it you know, it was, it's really not that hard. And, and you are getting a lot of help from the community. So there are LTS releases, four years, you know, that's way more than the Linux kernel, uh, that, that, these, that these releases are maintained. You're continually getting package updates which means you're getting, you know, you're getting security patches for, for all the CVEs. And all you need to do to get that stuff is git pull, because these, because what are the layers? They're just git repos. And they are, you know, you, you cloned a specific tag, like Scarthgap, the LTS release. So as, as that branch, you know, get, receives commits, you can pull those commits and you'll have all the latest stuff in there. And if you're doing Rust, which I know a lot of you are, you have cargo bit bake. Car so this, this will generate recipes for your Rust software in, in, in bit bake. Five minutes? Oh, it's done? It's done. Oh, boy. OK. All right. <laughs> really? That was fast. OK. Well, I, 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 I want to, before I end, um, I want, so I'm just, like, I am not a core contributor to, to the Yocto project. Um, I'm a user, really more of a spectator. and. Uh, it is a huge project. Um, I, I can't really do, do, 
do it justice with one slide. There, there, there are many more core contributors than, than these people. Um, but these, these are just, um, so everything I talked about, the, you know, the CVEs, meta virtualization, I really need to call out Bruce Ashfield because he's been working towards this idea of, of making Yocto work for the cloud for the better part of the last 10 years. And I would not be up here talking, I would have nothing to talk about if it was not for him. And he is working on the binary Linux distro, which is, is like, this is gonna enable the workflow that you want. The binary Linux distro that is being worked on now will allow you to download and install packages just like you do now with, with Alpine. Um, Joseph Halsmeyer is the person who introduced me to this community. Uh, I, I, he, he helped me with the book, and uh, he's, a, he's known as the Yocto Jester in, in, in the community. He's, he's a funny guy. Um, open source needs more funny people. We're, we're, we're too serious, my, myself included. And then lastly, Richard Purdy. Not only is he the project architect, but he is the project founder. He founded it more than 20 years ago, um, and it's just an in, incredible commitment, incredible dedication. These are, these are some of the best people working in open source today. My apologies, there are so many more than these. Like, some of them are my friends, they're, they're, they're cursing me right now. Uh, there's at least 60 core contrib contributors, and, um, yeah, it's just, it, and they're all under the umbrella of this, this one project. And uh, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll open it up for questions now. Th thank you so much for, for sticking around. Uh, I have books to give out. And, and yeah, this is, this is all systems go, so come at me. <laughs> thank you very much. We get two minutes for questions. So um, when we build like containers using the distroless base images, right? It's super nice. View. The tech surface gets gets well, smaller. Well, oh, 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 right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's. Yep. Yeah, and you alluded to the same fact, right? You can build like a thing without a shell and everything. Yep. But then when it comes to debugging, it's very tough if you don't have any of the tools. Yeah. Like Kubernetes, for example, introduced these ephemeral debug containers, which are quite nice. You and actually access the other container. Well, Anything to help? So, there? you know, the, the Yocto way of, of getting debug tools is, is to, you know, there are, uh, what, what is it, there's, there's like these package bundles. So there's one that, uh, if, like say for instance, you build a test image, like, like that usually includes GDB, and, and other things like, like SSH, you, you don't want SSH on a production image, but hey, if you need to debug, like you kind of, you need SSH a lot of time, you know, S trace, all, all those things are, are very easy to add. You just don't want to do that in production, right? Because like then, then those those things are all out there on the production image. So, so it, and also dev tool, itself I've found really helps with debugging because it it, 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 it it expects you to have those debug tools already it actually installs them for you as you're you're modifying any recipes or creating your own recipes because that's how else are you gonna know if it, the thing even works, right? It's it's like you need you need the debug tools during that development stage. Oh quick one. Uh, so you talked about how you built from source, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I think a lot of distros are now, especially after the uh, XC debacle, are moving to building from source. Mm -hmm. How do you see Yato in that context? Is it any different to a 
this track and use well, more bass I mean, image? Well, I mean, we've been doing that from the beginning, right? So we, we've been so building from, from source to beginning. Uh, I think the other distros could have something to learn from us. I, I mean, the other, the other distro that is, you know, doing reproducible builds is Debian, right? Like, that's what they're known for. And, um, uh, but you know, they're, they're doing it a different way than we are. You know, there's, they have a whole, their own build system, you know, de-bootstrap, all, all that. Um, you know, we, we have embedded origins, but we're really looking to break out of that and, and get into the cloud because, because you get the, you get the benefits, right? You get S bombs, you get CVE check, like it's just one line and you'll get a report of all, all the CVEs on, on your image. Um, that it's, it's hard to do that, you know, the, the pre-existing ways, but, but we, we've had to do that because, you know, our things are running on edge devices in the internet where, you know, that's a dangerous place to be. Thank you very much. Thank you.